Gotta get in and hear what's going on. Fraudulent lending was a terrible curse. Fraudulent foreclosures were ten times worse. Now these families are homeless. Where will they go? Ten million for a close and millions more to go. Take away what's left of our democracy. Change corporate laws so it's clear to see. Civil rights are for people like you and me. Corporations are people, so why should they be allowed to play around with our democracy? Corporations are people, so why should they be allowed to play around with our democracy? Corporations are people, so why should they be allowed to play around with our democracy? Good to see you. Thanks for being out here. Corporations tell to bring down the economy. Taxpayers split the bill for their hypocrisy. They're not creating jobs, they're moving overseas. What a lie they contribute to communities. Do our children have a future? All their money's been spent. Now stress is taken over just to pay the rent. How many of us struggle just to make ends meet? While CEOs get bonuses and luxury suites. Can't sit and let corporatocracy take away what's left of our democracy. Change corporate laws so it's clear to see. Civil rights are for people like you and me. Uh, we're here on behalf of uh, um, the anti-Monsanto campaign and also the Occupy movement. So, everybody here that's live streams, um, you stream, YouTube, all the live streams, um, pass the word on to everybody that a victory was won today here at um, Davis, California, the Northern California action to shut down Monsanto. Um, worldwide. Last year, there was 84 protest sites worldwide in the name of uh, millions against Monsanto to shut down Monsanto. And today, um, the campaign lives on, so I'm going to cut it short, definitely, because everyone, everyone who is over there right now should definitely come over here and celebrate, pass the word on that people, consciousness is arising in, arising in the community, because this is really a battle of consciousness. If you don't eat it, they don't sell it. So don't buy GMOs, make sure that stuff's labeled so our future generations could not have cancer and diabetes and all this other stuff that's plaguing our generation today because of unlabeled foods and unconsciousness of what we're eating. So thank you to Occupy Sacramento for doing the live stream today. Santa, we already won today. We won today, but the message is for the worldwide to shut down. So for all you at home live streaming, the action for today is to bring consciousness of what can we do as a state to shut down Monsanto. And when can we have a worldwide resolution passed in the United Nations to ban GMOs, to ha hold Monsanto accountable for their actions. So today is a day of organizing now that Monsanto was closed down. And we GMOs have got to go! Hey, hey, ho, ho, we don't want your GMOs. Hey, hey, ho, ho, we don't want your GMOs. We are here to save Monsanto out the FDA. We are here to save Monsanto out the FDA. Commander Horns, the GMOs. Monsanto has got to go. Commander Horns, the GMOs. Monsanto has got to go. So they shut down again 7.30 this morning um, because of the rallying of these wonderful protesters at their plant in Davis, California. Organizers had people show up starting at 6.30 in the morning where they have been doing rallies, chants, 
Standing in solidarity with the workers, though, we're hoping that the workers were paid for today, even though the Monsanto plant will not be in production this Friday. Today is Friday, March 16th. All right, let's... So we have a victory today, and this victory came from millions of people worldwide protesting in solidarity for our food, our future, and for our health. This is way bigger than um, what the media is trying to minuscule it out to be. There are millions of people right now protesting worldwide. There are millions of people right now campaigning for GMOs out of their country, out of, their, out of this world. Um, what we're here today is to send, uh, plant this seed of freedom for our food, plant a seed of consciousness for our future generations to pick up this, this movement to make, to make it echo throughout the rest of the world. That we want our, our food back. We want these corporations out of our government. Why? Why is? Why is this happening to us? A lot of people are forced into this position to where we have to protest. Nobody should be out here today protesting because the government should be doing a good job of regulating all this stuff that is happening to us. All these corporations that have infiltrated our government and created these puppeteer politicians. That's why we're here today, and that's why we have youth uh, that are here speaking today. That's why we have elders that are here speaking. Joining that generation gap for all of us here for our future. My name is Cheyenne Sun Thunder. I'm the host of Small World Radio. Although I don't want to admit this much, technically I'm a child. On January 21st, 2010, the Supreme Court declared that Monsanto, along with all other corporations, were technically, were technically people, meaning that Monsanto too was once a child. His parents had high hopes, as his name implies, my holy. Monsanto was born in 1901 with a, with a disorder revealing abnormal and violent social behavior. As a child, Boy Santo began to make creations that copied the natural world. The baby Monsanto first created saccharin by combining acids, sulfur dioxide, chlorine, and ammonia. Monsanto's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Stockholder, immediately sold his creations to the American Republic and made millions while laboratory animals were at the same time dying of the tumors from the saccharin, which didn't bother the boy in the least. A child like this would be a major problem in my school. As a teenager, Monsanto was given a license to kill over 200,000 men, women, and children by the U.S. military when he helped create the atomic bomb. The young Holy really enjoyed this kind of work and refine the radioactive war machine until just a few years ago. He helped spread nuclear weapons and radioactive contamination all over the world. After World War II, Monsanto turned his twisted mind to making chemicals, especially chemicals to both grow and destroy vegetation. Monsanto's own diary admits he knew that his chemicals could deform or even kill humans, but that didn't stop him or the United States from using it on millions of Vietnamese men, women, and kids in the U.S. Army. Over one half million Vietnamese children have been born deformed by Monsanto's product, Agent Orange. Some of the other horrible creations created by this person known as Monsanto are still used today in much of our food supply, while Monsanto's parents and close relatives continue to bury the evidence, falsify test results, pay off politicians, and control courts like the one that breathed life into it. As both boy and man Santo, he was a sneak. He perfected sneaking his demented products into even our baby food. By now, everyone knows his sick mind is in, inside most every bag and box in our grocery stores. I never really had dissected a frog in school before, but man Santo not only did that, but also figured out how to change male frogs into female frogs with one of his chemicals creations and somehow convinced Americans that it was okay and to put the chemical in water all over this country. In case you didn't know, the chemical is atrazine and the product is Roundup. Monsanto amazingly peed and pooed over 37 million toxic pounds of his self into land, air, and water leading to some gigantic lawsuits and countless sick humans and animals. Since he was 28 years old and still today, the law escaping genius Monsanto has toxified our world with his creation. One of the deadliest threats known, PCBs. And this and this criminal mind 
Hoskins criminal line knew that 50% of animals tested with PCBs has died in his laboratories. Think about it. If you were an animal, wouldn't you claw and tear through every corporate citizen just to get this, to this guy, Man Santo? In 1997, far, uh, Indian, far Farmers in India began to commit suicide because of the way Monsanto treated them. Let me explain. Monsanto would get farmers who mostly couldn't read or write to sign a contract that said they had to use only their seed for years and, and not replant the seed that the farmer grew. They had to go back and buy new seed each year. The contract also forced them to poison their ancestral lands with pesticides they had to buy from Monsanto. They fell deeper and deeper into debt to Monsanto. Then, to make sure they didn't plant the seed on their own, Monsanto created the suicide seed that not only killed itself after one generation, it began to spread to the farmer. Because of the despair Monsanto put, put them in, nearly 300,000 fathers and farmers committed suicide. Suicide over a suicide seed. Today, Monsanto continues to escape true law enforcement. If, he, if we were to compare, Mon, compare Monsanto to other men, they would be Adolf Hitler, Napoleon, Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Sauron, and let's face it. <laughs> My name is Mahaya Sol, and I'm 14 years old. At school, no teacher will talk about Monsanto. Most of the students haven't even heard of it. The corn they serve at school isn't organic. It's genetically modified. And if I ate enough of that corn, I wouldn't be surprised if I grew an extra leg or a couple more eyes. How do I know my children won't be born with deformities from the food I ate? Should I be afraid to reproduce? Monsanto is already known for deformities. Cattle feed in China has been connected to female babies growing breasts. The babies drink cow milk and the cow eats GM corn and are also given bovine growth hormones to produce milk faster. The chemicals in Monsanto seeds make it illegal for a farmer to retain the seeds from this year's crops and plant them next year. So every farmer so every year, farmers have to buy more seeds from Monsanto instead of just recycling them. So now the farmer is dependent on Monsanto, and Monsanto seeds now contain pesticides, and other seeds are pesticide resistant, so the seed can kill everything except itself. Think about it. You plant a kernel of corn and it grows, and it has a pesticide or GM trait in it now. Now, that corn grows into a stalk and gives you an ear of corn. That corn is going to be fed to us in cereal or some other product. So isn't that pesticide in the genetic trait now in me? The answer is yes. And I'm supposed to believe Monsanto and my government that this is safe? Most of the rest of the world won't have it in their foods because they say it isn't safe. So what is so special about my government or Monsanto that I should trust them with my life? Now here's the interesting fact. The U.S. Secretary of Agriculture and Veneman was on the border, board of directors of Monsanto's subsidiary Calgi in this building behind me. How is that legal? The infamous Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, let me remind you, this is the guy who said, we have known knowns and we have unknown knowns. And we have known unknowns and we have unknown unknowns. Yes, Donald Rumsfeld. He is the director of Monsanto's Cyril Corporation. Cyril makes the swine flu vaccine that the government tried to make everybody take. Remember that? I hope you didn't take it. Everybody should ask themselves this question. Does a director or a stockholder of Monsanto live near me or one of its hundred subsidiaries? A key component in Monsanto's plan to dominate world agriculture with genetically modified seeds is the absence of labeling genetically engineered food. All U.S. food must have labels listing the ingredients in the food, but... The FDA, USDA, and EPA say genetically modified foods deserve an exception, meaning they are sold without saying genetically modified. Their plan has successfully prevented consumers from choosing other seed companies, only because they're not informed that there are deadly chemicals in the seed. The plan has also reduced the likelihood of a consumer revolt. But that's why we're here, right? To make a difference for our children and my children's children. Oh. Woo! For those of you who know what a chemtrail is, pay close attention. Monsanto tested a very controversial jet fuel additive for the U.S. military at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. That additive is today known as Status 450 and is highly suspected by many experts to be linked to aluminum and barium metals being found in rain, air, and soil samples after heavy 
jet tails have been seen in the sky. And while I cannot prove that these metals are directly linked to Monsanto, creation there is a high probability since Monsanto has already created so many dark secrets for our military, including triggers for the atomic bombs and Agent Orange, for example. Monsanto is a military contractor, period. They must be placed in the category at least on par with Halliburton, Raytheon, and Gen General Electric, another builder of nuclear weapons. They can easily be linked to the death of millions of people and the destruction of a huge chunk of our planet. Their poison is in the tissue of every living being, plant and animal alike. That is PCBs, by the way. In an evil sense, they are the perfect killing machine. They are in our air, they are in our land, they are in our bodies. Because they are uninvited inside of me, Monsanto is rape. These things that I and others have said today about Monsanto and the relationship with the government cuts to the heart of the problems of being an American in 2012. Our government and corporations poison us while they make billions off it. Our government taxes us to pay a food and drug administration to essentially poison us and kill us. Cancer is on the rise. Alzheimer's is on the rise. Autism is on the rise. War is on the rise. Everything but love, trust, and God are on the rise. This has got to stop, and it has got to stop now. We cannot go into 2013 as we are going into 2012. I call upon every person to hold each other's hands, gain strength from your faith in each other, stand up to corruption, to war, to corporation, every one of them that is hurting us, that is hurting the environment. I call upon every person to change the world this year. Thank you. For the right to know, we're a grassroots coalition of uh, food companies, environmental activists, regular people that want uh, GMOs to be properly labeled. Like the other 50 countries around the world that require mandatory labeling of these foods. Um, back in 1992, GMOs were considered substantially equivalent of other counter crops, like a tomato that's GMO and a regular tomato. They, they feel that it's the same. I do not feel that it's the same when you're, you're going in the World Health Organization definition of a genetically modified organism is when you alter the genes um, in an unnatural way. So it would never occur in nature. So I'm here with labelgmos.org and we really, really need everybody's help to go to labelgmos.org and to sign up to volunteer. That's not going to commit you to 50 hours a week. That's going to get you in touch with your local organizer from your county and they're going to let you know where the trainings are and the meetings are. Um, the ballot initiative process is um, you have to fill out the forms very correctly so that they count. We need 850,000 signatures. We only have about six weeks left. So we need everybody here to go to labelgmos.org, sign up to be a volunteer, and then take these uh, ballot initiatives to your church, to your job, to your school to your social organization and get a couple signatures here and there. This is really grassroots. This is our opportunity. I personally lived in Washington and tried to get our Congress members and our elected officials to listen to us. Well, guess what? They're bought out by Monsanto and these large corporations. When you have a revolving door between the governmental agencies that are supposed to regulate these foods and then you have the previous vice president or head attorney on um, the second in charge of that agency, hello, I mean, we all know that. It's really simple. They're not going to look out for our best interests. So we're going to take this grassroots campaign, and that's the special thing about ballot initiatives. Once we get the needed signatures, this will be placed on the ballot in November, and then we can vote on it in California. And the only way that they can overturn this is through another ballot initiative. So it's really, really important. I know you guys all have love in your heart for a free society and that's why you're here today in the rain um, to, to let Monsanto to know that we want them out. So use that energy and help us gather the needed signatures so that we actually have an option of voting on this in November. It's really, really important. So label GMOs.org, sign up to be a volunteer. What I do for people, an I had a guy that said, I like GMOs. I said, take Great. that money. Now on. you can locate them because they'll be labeled and I can locate them and avoid them. So there's, you just got to get some, I've got a website for our county, uh, labeled GMO Shasta, and I have all the talking points on there, all the rebuttals. It just takes a minute to get well-versed in it, and then you really can come back. What's the problem? 
Don't we live in a free society? Don't we have a right to know what we're putting in our bodies? I find that to be the most intimate act that I do on a daily basis. We all do this thing. And this is the common thread that will bind us. And we can weave that, that, that blanket that is the humans. So um, I love all of you. And I appreciate it. And please like us on Facebook. Spread it. Network it. Send it out there. I'm honored to be here. It's always a pleasure to come and take on a huge juggernaut of a corporation as Masato. And here to decolonize people about our food supply around the world. Now, many of you may not have heard of our organization, United Native Americans. We were founded in 1968 in the Greater Bay Area. We are involved in the takeover of Alcatraz, Wounded Knee, and a couple long walks across country. We led a group one time that took over Mount Rushmore, and reclaimed it for our people, the Lakota Nation. Now, many of you do or do not know this, but we founded the first Native American Studies program in the United States, Woo! UC Berkeley, during the Third World Strike. We started the decolonization period for our people. At that time, there was only, out of our race, there was only 10 Indians who had a PhD. Out of a whole race of people, thanks to these white people wanting to keep us down and not give us the education that is necessary to succeed in their society. And one of the things we want to share with you today about this, this whole, this whole thing on why we're here to protect our food. Many of you do or do not know this, but you know the contributions of Native Americans have been extensive for all of us around the world. You know the so-called discovery of America by Christopher Columbus initiated the most drastic and far-reaching cross-fertilization of cultures in the history of the world. Now, 50 of the new new food supplies were produced by American Indians. Within a century or so after the, the so-called discovery of America, more than 50 new foods have been carried back to the old world. Plant foods discovered by Native Americans. According to American scientists, more than 200 species of plant foods were cultivated by Indians living in North, South, and Central America before the becoming of these Europeans. The following group of foods produced by this particular list used and developed by Native Americans. This includes corn, 20 different varieties, popcorn, wild rice, squash, pumpkin seeds, pumpkin, and berries, uh, pineapple, chewing gum, chocolate, peanuts, potatoes, white and sweet, Jerky, turkeys, avocado, peppers, <laughs> paprika, strawberries, sunflowers, all these different lists and beans, 15 diff 14 different varieties. Now, Indian plant foods found in world markets today, at a glance, the different plant foods that were first raised and domesticated by Native Americans revealed that many of these crops can now be found in markets all over the world which Monsanto now controls. The following is a table of leading as far as all these different foods, which include wheat, potatoes, rice, corn, barley, sugar, oats, soy, cotton seed, and peanuts. The leading four crops of the world. It is clear that this table that qualified the first four groups exists solely in wide margin. Two leading old groups of the four groups, so uh, two of the world, white and rice, flourish a total of 562,185,000 metric tons of food per year. The two leading crops, the next two line leading crops, potatoes and corn, are from the New World and produced a total of 500, 500,031,641,000 metric tons per year. The next five crops from the old world, barley, sugar, oats, soybean and rye, cotton, and peanuts. Indian food groups make up over half of the world's food supply. Using the food products from this table, others not mentioned, over half of the world's present food supply comes from American Indians. The history of the potato. The potato was first raised by Indians in the Appalachian Highlands of South America by priests pre-Columbian times. It was first taken to Europe by the Spaniards in about 1570. 
It was first recorded appearance in England was in 1596, over a century after Columbus so-called discovered America. Its first recorded appearance in England was 1596, over a century after. But it was in Ireland that it has achieved its greatest importance. The earliest certain date of presence of potato in Ireland is 1606. Within the next 50 years, it became the most important single source of food in the country. Now, all of these different foods that we have supplied throughout the history to all of the world have gone unnoticed for many years. Just like all of our contributions to the world have gone unnoticed. They considered us to be less than human. And that is very sickening when you think of how the world's food supply comes from us as the indigenous people here. Now the reason why we're here today is to stand in solidarity together to fight this huge juggernaut of a corporation and to decolonize the world about this issue. Because the world needs to know about what we're fighting against. The world needs to know exactly our contributions as Native Americans. We are a beautiful people. This is our island. This is ours and it will always be ours. All that we ask today is for peace, love, and prosperity, and for understanding amongst all of us as human people. I want to thank everyone of you for coming out today, especially the kids here. It's a beautiful thing to see young activists, young future warriors who are going to take our place. Woo! Hello. I come from a community uh, in Shasta County. It's kind of in between Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's two tentacles and this beast, this beast that's uh, sucking the life and the resources out of our planet, shoving it into their pockets. Two of the main tentacles, Monsanto and Sierra Pacific Industries, are, are, are ravaging my area. They're taking the native forest, they're stripping it, they're killing it with herbicides. They grind it up, they haul it, and they burn it, and they sell it for fuel. And Sierra Pacific gets paid for all the good they're doing by selling carbon credits. And, uh, and so this beast that is teamed up with Monsanto is, uh, is, is everywhere. And, uh, and the only way that I can see to fight it is, is to educate ourselves, be very knowledgeable, get our sources straight, get our facts straight, so we are unshakable with the truth, and then confront the lies and bullshit, wherever it is. And, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we have to educate ourselves. We get the truth uh, square and the facts right and our sources correct. And and, uh, and, and and so we can't be shaken from it. And whenever we hear that lies and bullshit, people talking the paper, on the news, on the streets, we confront them, force them to show their sources. But most of the time, their sources come from gossip news. And uh, so uh, I want to thank everybody for being here, too. I come down from Shasta County to stand with you people. And, 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 and I will again. And, and at some point, we might ask you to come stand with us. Because at this point, our, our, our Earth is in a biological crisis. Uh, we're losing 30,000 species a, a year that are going extinct due to these corporate uh, uh, parasites that are sucking our planet dry. So, so, so we have to stand together. Thank you. generations that have now caused more destruction than anyone in, in the whole history of the world. I want to thank you for being here. It's really, really an incredible honor to have you here. I know that people have traveled and made sacrifices to be here. There's people backing us up at home to be here. You know, it's taking a movement. It is a movement that we're building. These are the building blocks of an incredibly important, critical, historic movement, this time has come. Woo! I've been part of building social movements here in California. I was at the WTO in Seattle in 1999, November 30th. It started yeah. off with just a few people talking about global trade, global power, all the tentacles of global power. Oh, there wasn't food. And then on November 1999,
29th or November 30th, there were 50,000 people shutting down one of the world's most powerful institutions, the World Trade Organization. Remember that. That movement didn't start, didn't happen overnight. It happened because people were out there building it, doing the hard work of organizing. We've got to move offline, online to offline. We've got to get out into the community. We've got to get out to the streets. We've got to talk to people in all places. We've got to get take this message to where people are at. I just want to take a second here to honor the fact that we are living in a really interesting dichotomy. The Monsanto worldview, you've heard all about it. It's a cycle of death, a destruction of the web of life, of the building blocks of life, a completely unnatural experiment that we're all guinea pigs for. And across the street, you have this incredibly well-tended community garden, well-loved, precious, growing organic food, growing food that people are eating here. The local food that we have in Davis is an incredible model of what the solution is, right? This is a solution, local food grown by local farmers, local community gardeners, planting seeds that are not genetically altered, saving seeds, creating our own seed banks, sharing seeds. That's the solution. One of the most radical acts that I do as a consumer, as an activist, is to purchase and to get my food from a community-supported agricultural system from the full circle farms. Right, just eight, six miles out of town, I have a beautiful basket of produce on my doorstep. It takes me, gives me such honor to know that I can, I can have the option of feeding my family health and safe food. And everyone, everyone should have this right. This is a human right to eat healthy food that's not genetically altered and tainted, poisonous. This school district right here also is on actually a model for bringing local food to school children so that when kids line up, get their lunch, they can know that they're not getting milk pumped with, cow with hormones, genetically altered corn and soybeans in their food. They're trying to bring, they are successfully bringing a ton of incredible local food, local produce. They have a, um, a whole uh, salad bar set up for young students. They're working with elementary schools and schools all over the district. Farm to school program. It's a model. The alternatives exist. It's about generating them in every community so that everyone has a right to access these healthy foods. And what else? I just want to share one last thing about a world, the worldview. I think that we are all torchbearers. We're all holding this light. We're holding this torch, illuminating a world that is really the, the natural world that's meant to be for all of humanity, rooted in what the values that we believe that everyone cares about, but they've been so colonized because this is the most co mentally colonized country on earth. Make no mistake about that. We are mentally colonized more than any other country on earth. People do not know the truth. They do not know what's good for them. They think what they're doing is good for them. It's the opposite, right? One of the things that I learned living in, in the Bolivian Andes was a worldview called Wayne Vivian. It means we live well when everyone else lives well. Well, the whole yeah. network of life lives well. When our brothers and sisters and our neighbors and our community members are taken care of and in the natural world as well. Unfortunately, the paradigm here is let's live better. More, 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 better, better, better. And that's competing, that's putting us and pitting people against each other. That's why there's so much sickness in this country. We're living a false paradigm. So I just want to share that. Buen vivir, a sense of living together, is what really creates security, safety, health, and well-being. And it's not that intangible. It's right here. The, big, the building blocks are right here. So once again, thank you. Welcome to Davis. If there's anything I can do to help make you stay here a little more comfortable. I'm glad that the police are behaving themselves over there. <laughs> Um, and just really, it's an honor to be here. I look forward to being back on the streets with you. Woo! To the streets!
Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our Thank you. I'm Donna Russell. I live in a senior citizen's complex up the street here in Davis. I've lived in Davis 21 years. And I hope you don't think this is the only Monsanto facility here in Davis. There's Cal Jean down on 2nd Street and Simesis Food uh, Seeds, which is their seed distribution place, uh, which is out on one of the county roads just between Davis and Woodland. So you didn't really shut down all the Monsanto's places that are here in Davis. Um, news is kids on the bus have no idea what this is. So one by one, not everybody leaves here, but one by one, hop on one of the red buses going around. If you can have a dollar, you know, or a student pass to, you know, to, to do that. And take your sign with you and talk to the students. Because unfortunately, Monsanto owns the entire ag department at UC. I, wow. I stumbled into a class at my at my place yesterday. Um, the older learning, uh, Ollie, at, at which is UC, uses our facilities because they like really cheap rent for classes. And I looked at the calendar wrong, and I thought it was a class on constitutional law. And I was all excited, and I went in, and I went, this doesn't sound right. <laughs> it was a class on Monsanto and GMO, and the instructor, who is from UC Davis, he did show the film, but then he stood up there saying, oh, but, but this is only one side of it. Really, GMO is, is really very good and everything. And this man is on the board of directors at our local Davis Food Co-op, and he's on board of directors at San Francisco Farmer's Market. And he actually really believes that GMO and Monsanto are good guys. Um, and I asked him if I could, because I'm one of the signature gatherers for the ballot initiative here in California. And I asked him if I could tell people about it and pass it around. He goes, no, 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 no. I have to get cleared by the university. They might think I'm in one. So I just kept my hand up until he had to call on me. <laughs> then I told everybody that he had absolutely nothing to do with it, and I hadn't even planned it. It was just like, he dropped me in the class, right? And so a lot of people came because they had just got finished seeing the whole film of Monsanto and GMO, uh, hosted by Judith Redman of Full Belly Farm up in the Cape Valley, and so they came out to sign uh, sign up for that, and some of them came out to sign because they asked me, why did he stand up there after you finished saying he had nothing to do with it, and kept saying, I had nothing to do with this, I had, and I said, because he's afraid the university is going to fire him, because it's going to get back that this happened, and they said, well, I'm going to sign it just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So last on our speakers list is Fago from Occupy Sacramento. Brother out there every day, occupying overnight, making sure that the community has these flyers, making sure these community are being aware of what's going on. Just like all of us, but he actually occupies every day on the streets. Plus every day occupying uh, occupy a day all night. Alright. Round plus for Fago, Occupy Sac. Woo! What's up, everyone? Uh, I just kind of want to say, you know, I, I, I've been doing a little bit of studying, up, talking to people and stuff. Uh, like, one of the things that really takes me off, we've been talking a lot about the local issues, uh, the GMOs and our food, and this and that. You know, we, we, we have a great country here. We can do a lot better. We're getting that out of here. But what really pisses me off even more than that is what they're doing to third world countries. When they start selling seeds to countries that already have food issues, they already don't have enough food to feed their people, and then they sell them seeds to only grow one crop, that's fucked up. 
I mean, how you're, you're going to create an entire country, an entire civilization that is dependent on your genetically altered bullshit? That is not okay. And then you got to look at the way they do it out here, even in America. The genetically altered bullshit costs way less to go and purchase at a store. So those of us that have financial problems, can't really afford to eat food that's healthy for us anymore. We're stuck eating Chef Boyardee sometimes. You know, I, I love that shit. I read the list of companies that's owned by Monsanto. I saw that, I was like, oh, Quaker Opium. You know, Hunt's Ketchup, Heinz Ketchup. All these corporations that we think are V8 even. You know, we think we're getting something that's going to help us sustain ourselves. We think we're getting some food that's actually going to be healthy. You know, and instead, we're getting genetically mutated. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about everybody else. I know everybody here is kind of pissed about that. But to me, that that's something that everybody should be aware of. Everybody should know. I mean, look at it. Look what asparagine does. They're putting that into some of the oh, waters okay. and some of the foods, and it causes memory loss. It, it uh, has been shown to help lead into Alzheimer's, stuff like that. You know, they're putting the shit into these foods, and we all think that this food's all good. Look, Campbell's Soup even is owned by Monsanto. It's like, we, these are things that everybody eat. Everybody here has probably eaten something that has been owned by Monsanto. Okay, and it's fucked up. How, how do we... How do we... How have we yeah, allowed this to happen to our country? You know, we're, okay. we're supposed to have a uh, non-monopoly right, law. It's supposed to be illegal to monopolize on everything. And yet, here's this major corporation that has officials in office, in our government, in the FDA, in all over the place, allowing this to happen. They're, they're genetically altering it, doing away with natural production of crops, you know, they're getting, making it to where our crops won't grow anymore, so that we have to buy their seeds. What happens if their factory blows up and all the seeds die? You know, that that does not help us. That's pretty much all I had to say. And then, he, he before that, he was the lead attorney with Monsanto. So then he goes to the lead attorney in the 80s with Monsanto. Then he goes to the FDA, and he's with the FDA, and he regulates these foods. And then he leaves Monsanto, and he's the vice president of Monsanto in the later 90s. And guess where he's at today? He's our food safety czar under the Obama administration. Yes. So if you just follow the trail, you'll see, oh, God, what a great uh, thing. Why would, this ever, why would anything ever and that's why I'm here as a volunteer with a citizen's ballot initiative because I see that our elected officials, are their pockets are lined with these companies. So how will they ever listen to us? And when 80 to 95% of the U.S. consumers, a whole spectrum of people, want these foods labeled for the last 20 years, and yet year after year, they do, they percentage, like, puts bills mm -hmm. every year and they get shot down. I drove to Sacramento and met with uh, my representative, um, about the salmon being labeled, but he, he couldn't spend 30 seconds with me, you know? So that's why I'm here doing this, because um, I see that there's we have to take back our government. We have to be active citizens. It's not even like anyone's trying to get anything banned. Trying no, to and, that, and see that, and it speaks volumes to me that they're why? fighting it so much. Why aren't you proud in your product? Are you not proud of your product? This is what you do. Are you not proud? Why are you trying to hold it back from consumers? You put saccharin in your coffee, anything with sugars is suspect, donuts. You put saccharin in your coffee, anything with sugars is suspect, donuts. You put saccharin in your coffee, anything with sugars is suspect, donuts. Okay, on the roof. Yeah, he's been there for at least the last hour, but I know. Really? <laughs> Ian, so I don't know if he's on our side. I'll videotape him for, for good measure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely repost everything there. And then also on the forums, like on OccupySac.com, there's a forum, and that's another place. Too. Yay! What's your sign say here? It says, dude, what happened? The halibut happened. What the halibut happened here?
dude, what the hell have been happening to you? <laughs> and then it says, sup ladies, and then it says, first ice cream, and now my DNA is that thing, what the heck, Monsanto? And then over here it says, just say no to GMO, Monsanto, gross, skulls, skulls and crossbones. <laughs> very nice, I love your artwork. Thank you very much. And then this right here says, says Monsanto clothes for biohazard. Hey Trish, Occupy Sacramento, we got Fago out here, explain to the future generations it was good for the economy when they can't farm the land, read the air, or drink the water. Fuck you Monsanto! <laughs> Yay, this yeah. guy's got Occupy Monsanto, Occupy stop the Chico. GMO! Occupy Chico! Chico, Chico. Yeah. I went to Chico State! Chico. Represent, what's your name? Brittany. Brittany's from Sacramento too, she has hell, hell no GMO. Millions against Monsanto. What's this say? No GMO, GMO, no GMO. One of millions against Monsanto. No more suicide seeds. Mon Stop Monsanto. Andrea from Vallejo. Yay, thanks for being out here. Hi, who are you? Uh, I'm Eddie. Nice to meet you. Yours says no GMO, Monsanto must go. Shut down Monsanto. Very nice. Where are you from? Woodland. Woodland? Yeah, yeah nice. And this says... Citizens Coalition of Earth's Preservation. I love it. Very nice. What's your name? I'm Taylor. I'm an Anto Monsanto Project organizer as well as Occupy Woodland. Yay! Thanks for being out here. Thanks for organizing. And we're going to come over here. Doing good. And this is where the blockade was set up and Monsanto shut down at about, we got word at about 7.30 a.m. This is where tents were set up because we don't like them. Hi, what's your name? Walter, what's yours? Kim. Nice to meet you, Kim. Where are you from? Here. You're from Davis? Yes. You're from Occupy Davis, I'm yes. assuming? Walter. Very nice. Sure. Occupy Davis shirt, very yes. nice. Infamous, infamous Danny. Danny Garza. Good to see ya. Yeah. This is just video. <laughs> People like you and me. Monsanto ain't a person, so why should it be allowed to play around with our air blue sea? Monsanto ain't a person, so why should it be allowed to play around with our air blue sea? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And let's see, we got our good buddies over here. The uh, Davis police, thank you for coming out. We feel secure. Thank you so much. All of you people who are illegal immigrants who just go home. <laughs> go back to your own country. Solve your own problems. Occupy your own ancestral lands. You're here illegally, homie. And then you guys want to sit here and say, yeah, occupy, occupy. How about you occupy your own country? Start paying some rent to the indigenous people. Each tribe whose land you're on right now, you should go over to their, their particular tribal office and pay them rent. Not these banks. You should be paying the indigenous people rent. That's what's sickening to me. I hear about all these people. Occupy this. Occupy that. Occupy, occupy. Huh? How about you occupy your minds and actually see what's really going on in this world? The fact that your ancestors are nothing but a bunch of these little fucking thieves. Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of a little silent, didn't it? Wow, everybody's listening. Oh, that's good. That's good. I didn't come here to soothe your nerves. I came here to decolonize each and every one of you. And that's good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's what we do, baby. Been doing it since 1968. Been doing it for a long time. 42 years in the struggle, baby. We founded the Native American Studies Program at UC Berkeley during the Third World Strike. All the Native American Studies Programs around the United States were produced because of our organization. Yay! Thank God for that. At least now we got more doctors, lawyers, and engineers for our race to actually fight you damn people who are legally occupying our country. But it feels good to be here today and to see the solidarity and so forth. It's just funny that, you know, all these people here, especially this one down here, she really didn't like our sage. She was pretty upset. 
she didn't like, she, she wanted to do some religious persecution against us. But if they came here with holy water, oh man, never forbid that. You already know. It is what it is. That pissed me. Take your holy water and all you want. It ain't gonna make you holy. Ain't gonna do nothing. A larger profit from their control of the food supply, while the rest of us have to struggle for affordable, healthy food. Companies like Monsanto have enormous economic and political power. Their campaign contributions de determine the outcome of elections. Their lobbyists write our laws. In the words of an official statement of the Occupy Wall Street movement, they have poisoned the food supply through negligence and undermined the farming system through monopolization. They have profited off the torture, confinement, and cruel treatment of countless animals and actively hide their practices. They have continuously sought to strip employees of the right to negotiate for better pay and safer working conditions. They have deliberately declined to recall faulty products and endangering lives in pursuit of profit. They have donated large sums of money to politicians who are responsible for regulating them. As workers, consumers, and voters, we have very little influence. It's time to turn this around. As the Occupy Wall Street call to action put it, the task is ending the influence money has over our representatives in Washington. It's time for democracy, not corporocracy. We're doomed without it. We support Occupy Wall Street and the Occupy Together movement because when we get money out of politics, we'll get Monsanto out of agriculture. Woo! When corporations can't buy politicians, stores won't sell government society junk food. When health matters more than the bottom line, our food won't be laced with Monsanto's allergens, toxins, and carcinogens. When sustainability trumps profits, we'll replace polluting factory farms with carbon sequestering green organic farms. When justice is more important than stock prices, farm workers and family farmers will all make a good living. Couple of fun facts there. Very powerful. Yeah. What is it? If money is free speech, then some people have more free speech than others. And some don't have speech at all. If money is free speech, I don't got none. I don't got a speech at all. Seriously, Can I borrow some free speech? <laughs> but we're not panhandling for change. We're, pa we're fighting for change. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Donna. You gave a very good speech about UC Davis. Oh, my lens is getting smeared here. About UC Davis and how um, the Ag Department at UC Davis is controlled by Monsanto. That's crazy. Yes. That's awful. So you're Donna. Right. And you're from Davis. Yep. Born and raised? or? No. I'm a born and raised Northern California. Ah. I moved to Davis 21 years ago. Cool. My son went to Davis. Oh. What's your name? My name is Jen. Okay, are you from Davis or? No, I'm from uh, Chico and I'm oh. a high school senior. Oh, cool. Do you go to Chico State? Yes. No. Or you go to Chico High? No, well, it's kind of by Chico. It's like a Pleasant little town. Valley? It's called Corning. Corning ah, I played field hockey up there. You did? Yeah. yeah. You played field hockey? Yeah, I'm from I'm Bella Vista High School. We would always lose to you guys. But nonetheless. <laughs> Chico High Hey! Oh, oh. We don't want your GMOs! Hey, hey! Oh, oh. We don't want your GMOs! Hey, hey! Oh, oh. We don't want your GMOs! Hey, hey! Oh, oh. We don't want your GMOs! Hey, hey! Oh, oh. We don't want your GMOs! Allowed to play around with our democracy. Boom, boom, boom.
They lobby our Congress to deregulate. Homeowners didn't find out until too late. Monsanto ain't a person, so why should it be allowed to play around with our hair boots? Monsanto ain't a person, so why should it be allowed to play around?